Hello friends and welcome to PyShine. This is part one of the web development learning series in Python. Today, we will design a server client application for the Wi-Fi networks. We will use real-time processing in OpenCV, and with a Flask server, we will send this video to the clients. Also, you will learn how to deploy this application on web, so that the video can be accessed anywhere on the internet. It can be one or multiple clients. Let's talk about the scenario and its intended use case. We first consider a workplace where the server and clients are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. The server computer has a webcam. It can provide the live video frames of any scene. Our Flask application will run on the server and can provide scene information. Now, imagine a client computer that requires an access to the scene information. It will open a web page and send an HTTP request to the server. The server which is already listening on a socket address, will respond to this request and provides the scene information to the client. This information can be processed by the server according to the input parameters that are provided by the client. Flask is a web application framework written in Python. Let's say my app directory represents our main application. It has a Python file, app.py, and another directory, templates, which has the HTML file. In the app.py file, we import the Flask and render template modules from the Flask framework. We call the Flask class here. The dot root function of the Flask class is a decorator. It tells the application about the URL binding with the function. We can give any name to this function. Here, we name it index. This function will return the output of the render template function based on the index.html file, which is saved in the templates directory. Finally, we will run the application on its default local host address with an optional debug mode set to false. Now, let's have a look at the index.html page that will be rendered by the app.py. It's a normal HTML file with the text, hello world in the body section. All right, now, if we run the app.py code and in a browser enter the socket address of the server, we will see this text in the rendered HTML. It is highly recommended that you follow this tutorial step by step. Please pause this video and install these libraries in Python 3. All right, the version used in this tutorial is Python 3.6.5. We have the structure of directory. So these are the two files. Let's run the Python code in the PowerShell. As you can see, this is the default local host socket address. Now, Put this address in the browser to view the rendered output. Note that, once we run the code, the changes made to the HTML will not be affected unless we again run the app.py. Since we set the decorator on the function, so it can have any name. So, let's change the name and again run. Also, Let's change the text in the HTML as well. 
Once we run the application, all the settings are configured. Now, let's type ipconfig and find your computer IP address under the wireless LAN adapter, local area connection. Let's say, this is our IP address, so, let's put this against the host, and set the port number, as well. Now, let's run the code again, this time, the output will be available at this address, if your mobile device is also connected, to the same Wi-Fi router, as this computer, then you will find, the exact same output, on your mobile device. Alright, let's start making a simple video processing application in Python. We will import these essentials. Just like before, we will call the Flask class and use the decorator to render the index.html file. Now, Let's make a function that will change the brightness of the image. We add another function that can change the blur of the image depending on the input integer value. These input values will be provided by the client through the index.html file. We will obtain the brightness and blur values in the form of a dictionary, which we can call params. The PyShine process function will input params and open the video feed. After that, it will apply the change brightness and change blur values obtained from the params dictionary. After the video capture function is done, let's print this. Then, we initialize the variables to calculate the current frame rate of the video. In a while loop, we will get each video frame, and then apply the functions. Now, let's count the frames per second. We will count up to 20 frames, and then divide the counter, by the time used for this counting. Now, we can resize the image, and add some text information to it, such as frame per second, current day time, brightness value, and the blur value. We will provide the coordinates, to put the text, the frames per second, will be on the top left corner, the day time, will be on the top right corner, the brightness value, will be shown on the bottom left, and the blur value will be on the bottom right corner of the image. Now, let's encode the image to bytes so that it can be sent to the client. Here, we will use yield instead of return to output the frame without exiting this function. More detail on yield and return statements in Python is available in the description below. By using get or post method we will obtain the request and if is of type post then we will assign the form data of this request from the client to a global variable called result.
In the video feed function, the decorator for the results will get the params and return the response in the form of a processed frame. Finally, we will run the app for a computer with this host IP and port number. Also, we will use the threaded mode. Please write the host IP according to your computer. Next, in the templates directory, we will make a new index.html file with this code. Note that, we have given the same IP and port number, as in process.py file. In the form input, the client can provide two values. With the submit button, the form will be submitted to the server. All right. We require another HTML file in the templates directory. Its name is result.html. This page will be used to render the processed video feed from the server. We will use URL for method and a button to go back to the index.html. That's it for the local deployment. Now, we have a videos directory containing an MP4 file. Before deploying it on the internet, let's run the Python code and open up the web page at the specified address. Notice that the video is running fine on the local Wi Fi network. We can also run multiple instances as well. We can observe that each page gets the video frames according to the input parameters. Now, let's deploy this application on the internet. We will use pythonanywhere.com to deploy this application. Please sign up and select a unique username for that. The website will be hosted at this address. Then, you will find this page, so go ahead and select Flask Framework and click Next with Python 3.6 version. All the code files will be inside my site directory. So, let it be like this for now, and select Next. By default, the application will show this message on the website. In the free plan, you have to click this button once in three months to keep your website running smoothly. Our default code actually available here. So click on it to view the flaskapp.py file. Let's change this text to PyShine and save it. Now, let's go back and click on the web to reload the code. This step is very important to run the new instance of the Python code. After clicking reload button, we can refresh the web page to see the change. Alright, another aspect is the wsgi.py file. Here, we refer the Python file name to import the application. Now, 
we will make our application, so go ahead and remove this Python file. The code of this application is available in the description below. Let's import the process.py file. Also, make a new directory named templates. Then, one by one import these two HTML files. We will also make another videos directory and upload the video file to it. Alright, let's have a look at the uploaded files. Please note that, here, we have given a different address, as compared to the local deployment IP. Now, we require a virtual environment, so that we can install, the essential libraries. So click on the consoles, and go to bash console. Now make new virtual environment, using this command. Then work in this environment. We can check the path of current pip installer. Let's install the essentials. After that, let's go back, and click on the web to add, this virtual environment path. Also, change the working directory. Now, we can change the web server, gateway interface file, according to process.py. Let's save it, and go back, to reload website. Once it's reloaded, let's click the web address. Now, the website is available, online on the internet. So, let's input these parameters and submit the form. The video is available, with the exact same input parameters. That's all, for this tutorial. If you have questions, suggestions please comment, share if you like, and subscribe to PyShine. Have a nice day, and see you again.